I'm Alex Michelson. This week, an issue is exclusive, a break-in at the home of LA's mayoral frontrunner. It was very traumatic. Congresswoman Karen Bass gives her first on-camera interview to us about her two guns being stolen. What really happened? Plus, she opens up on other issues, including abortion rights. Then, a different view. So this is PragerU. Welcome. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. Look at this. We go inside PragerU, a nonprofit in the conservative values space, earning one billion views a year. And we talk with its founder. Plus, the left is the most racist, large group in the United States. Longtime talk show host Dennis Prager opens up about the state of the California Republican Party. The issue is starts right now. Broadcasting across California. You're watching The Issue Is. And welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. Our interview with Congresswoman Karen Bass has already made national headlines this week. We were the first to report that two suspects were arrested by the LAPD for stealing two guns from her home. In a bizarre twist, they only took the guns and nothing else. On Wednesday, we sat down with the Congresswoman at her LA office for a exclusive conversation about that incident and a wide variety of topics. Congresswoman Bass, welcome back to The Issue. As always, great to see you. Thank you. Always great to be on the show. Uh, I'm sorry to hear about what happened with you in terms of the robbery. From your perspective, what happened? Well, I came home one evening to see my house in disarray, and uh, it was very traumatic. And so they stole two guns right. that you say were locked up. They were locked. They were registered. They were locked in a safe box, and they were stashed away in a closet. Do you have any idea why somebody would do this, who these people are? I have no idea. I will tell you that I did meet with detectives today. They have arrested a couple of individuals, but that's basically all I know at this point. I mean, do you feel like you were, you were targeted? Because it's weird that they would just take the guns and not anything else, but right? But you know, Angelinos all around the city are not feeling safe. And I did feel safe until my safety was shattered, like so many Angelinos. So at this point in time, I don't have any further information. I don't know if it was random or what. And that's a reference to when we had the debate in the spring. I asked you, do you feel safe? Congresswoman, do you feel safe walking in? Los I do Angeles? feel safe. I would say a 10. I feel safe. But I do understand that a lot of people around the city do not feel safe. And I respect that. Um, you're saying now your My view on that has changed. My safety was shattered. Yeah. Uh, and how does that make you think differently about potentially being mayor or about the issue of public safety? Well, I don't know that it makes me think any different because I thought from the beginning that the number one job of the mayor is to make sure that Angelinos are safe. And in many neighborhoods, people don't feel safe. They would like to see an increased presence of police officers. And my position then and my position now is that for those neighborhoods that want to see an increased presence, then the quickest way to get officers on the street is to get them from behind the desk. It takes a long time to hire. We definitely need to hire. But we need to get officers on the street as fast as possible. I think there were a lot of people that were surprised that you had guns. Um, what kind of guns did you have and what's your relationship been like with guns over the years? <laughs> well, I had guns for personal safety as do many people. And uh, I think that gun control is extremely important, but I have never believed that people, if they wanted to have guns, should not have them. Rick Caruso has suggested that your guns may not have been safely secured. She should answer the question, did she have them adequately protected pursuant to the law? What's your response to that? My guns were registered. They were stored properly in a safe box. That's my response. It's not the only issue, obviously. This is happening in the middle of, of a sort of crazy back and forth in terms of where we're at in this race right now. How do you see the state of the mayor's race right now? Well, I'll tell you, it's very exciting. I have had a very exciting time going to every neighborhood around the city, having house meetings and rallies and hearing people's concerns. So it's a very exciting time. It's different than the primary. Uh, but I'm very encouraged at the breadth of support that I have, the coalition that I have put together, which is something that I have done for decades and have definitely been doing it in the campaign. Uh, the endorsements that I've gotten from community leaders, elected officials, um, bringing together labor and community. So it's an exciting time. 
Um, for it's also gotten pretty nasty recently. A lot of comments about USC as well going back and forth. Yeah, I think what that's the of nature that? of a. I think that's the nature of a campaign, and uh, I think it's important that we stay focused though on the problems of Angelinos. And I'm not sure how concerned Angelinos are about USC, but I do think Angelinos are concerned about one being safe, two the problem with homelessness, and the fact that our city has become so unaffordable. So that has been my focus. And and that has been the dialogue I've been having with voters all around the city. And Caruso's suggestion that your degree from USC was some sort of quid pro quo, you say? Well, he was the chairman of the Board of Trustees, so I think it's very interesting. Uh, he had full knowledge of what was going on. Um, another big issue that people care a lot about is abortion rights. We see that yes. as a huge thing in the midterms already. This week, Senator Lindsey Graham said that there should be a national ban on abortion at 15 weeks. And he suggested that if Republicans win the House and the Senate, there will be a vote on that. If we take back the House and the Senate, I can assure you we'll have a vote on our bill. If the Democrats are in charge, I don't know if we'll ever have a vote on our bill. Well, I know that Angelinos care about this issue, and I have supported, as a woman, a woman's right to choose my entire life. And so the difference between the two of us will be clear. Someone who has always stood for a woman's right to choose and a woman's right and access to abortion versus someone who has recently come into that position. And so I think what is also different um, on the race this time around is that the differences between the two of us are very clear, and that's one of them. Now, that is why it is so important that we pass this proposition that voters will have an opportunity to vote on. I believe it will be Proposition 1, and that will enshrine a woman's right to choose in our state constitution. What Lindsey Graham proposed doing yesterday makes makes it all the more important, gives a sense of urgency, because we know we have the right to choose in California. But if we learned anything from the last administration, the Trump administration, you can't take anything for granted. I mean, for 50 years, we've had this right. It was taken away from us. So we cannot just say, this is California. We don't have to worry about it. That's why we have to all go out and vote. And I know that it is an issue that women care, care about. I hear about it every day. Um, another issue that you care a lot about is human trafficking. Yes. Um, just this week in Congress, uh, one of your bills passed unanimously. That's right. Headed to President Biden's desk. What does that do exactly? That's, that's right. Uh, the president hopefully will sign it any day. And it basically provides resources to human, for human traffic victims. And this is an issue that I've worked on for many, many years. I had another bill pass out of the House on human trafficking as well. So this one adds to to it and it provides resources, financial resources to those community organizations who uh, do the work supporting victims as well as the victims themselves. Um, is it weird for you in these final days of Congress sort of wrapping things up? <laughs> well, it is, and it's certainly bittersweet. I mean, I've enjoyed my time in Congress, and, uh, you know, I didn't decide to leave because I got tired of Congress. I decided to leave because of the urgency of what we are facing in Los Angeles, the crisis that we have of people who are unhoused, the fact that three or four of them probably didn't wake up this morning, the fact that Angelinos aren't feeling safe, and also that the city has become so unaffordable. That's what led me to not run again. And I'm very excited um, with the campaign in the last 50 plus days. And a big part of that is gonna be the first televised debate next week. Yes. Uh, we're honored to be a part of that. Um, mm -hmm. What's your strategy? <laughs> my strategy is to get the issues out there and to be very clear about my values, who I am, and the various positions that I have. There was a Fox News commentator who suggested that Rick Caruso was the GOP's choice. Rick Caruso is the GOP uh, candidate out there. He, he would be, I think he would be a really good mayor. Mm. Um, and this race is go, it's going to be very tough. There's so many Democrats that live yeah. in Los Angeles. Do you agree I with that? I think he is the GOP's choice. I think that he has been a Republican the majority of his life. He's flipped back and forth. And I think when one flips back and forth, you do have to wonder exactly who they are. And when he says Democrats have screwed up this city and you're going well, to get more of the same. what I would say is, is that this is a Democratic city. <laughs> so 60 percent of the voters in Los Angeles are Democrats. But even more important than that, if you want to solve the issues of our city, we have a democracy. You have to work with the people who are elected in office and they are Democrats. 
So that's why I am proud of the fact that I have support from the elected officials on every level of government and I systematically pursued their endorsement because everybody that has endorsed me will be a decision maker and the most important issues in Los Angeles. So you can disparage those people who are in office and who make decisions, but then how are you going to work with them? If you think that you can go into City Hall and order everybody to do whatever you say, I think you're gonna have a surprise. Our thanks to Congresswoman Bass. We reached out to her opponent, Rick Caruso, offered him equal time this week. He declined our offer. He did agree to join us for the first televised debate of the L.A. mayor's race on Wednesday night. We're also hosting a debate for the L.A. sheriff's race. I'm co-moderating. You can watch both of them live on Fox 11 TV, or you can stream it live on the Fox 11 Los Angeles app if you don't live in Los Angeles. This is airing from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. Up next, we go inside PragerU, but first, we go to break with Above Los Angeles taking us above Venice Beach. Congresswoman Bass's favorite place to relax in L.A. Above Los Angeles takes us above Hollywood. When most people around the world think of California, they think of Hollywood and one of the most liberal areas in the country. Yet one of the most successful conservative content organizations in the country is also based right here in California. This week, we take you inside PragerU. So this is PragerU. Welcome. CEO Marissa Streit gives us a tour of PragerU, a nonprofit producing conservative-themed videos that earned more than one billion views last year. We believe that a more informed society is a better society. Marissa was hired in 2011 to execute the vision of founders Alan Estrin and talk radio host Dennis Prager. When people see your content online, what do you want them to think? Number one, I want them to think. Hey, everybody, Dennis Prager here with Fireside Chat number 251. In addition to Prager himself, the videos feature leading conservative thinkers like Larry Elder. If you're now thinking, what the hell are you talking about? Ben Shapiro, open Michael Knowles, Slave Candace Owens, and Dave Rubin. This right here is at the heart of Prager U. This is the set where the five minute video is recorded. There are over 500 five minute videos now online tackling issues like immigration. What happens to those citizens, including legal immigrants, if they get priced out of the job market altogether? Prager use content earning 4 million views a day. Overall, we think that America as a society is one of the most incredible places in the world. And so we want people to understand why is that? The Americans did have a general. His name, of course, was George Washington. There are creative lessons about every American president. Most Americans don't care about Chester Allen Arthur. We want them to. They'll learn. I've learned. Which group of people did President Coolidge grant American citizenship to? This show teaches kids about the Coolidge presidency. This is a show for kindergartners. There are six kid shows filmed here focused on values. Which means everyone needs to learn how to forgive. Whether you're four years old or 104 years old, if you want broccoli for your brain, if you want to be the smartest person at the next dinner party, you can come to our website and for free, get educated and informed. Yo, 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 welcome to Unapologetic Live. Taylor's here. Amala is one of the Gen Z and millennial stars they incubate here. Creative producer Taylor Trondle works on Amala's show. PragerU being in L.A. is kind of a breath of fresh air for young people who have pro-American values, who want to just be able to not have to walk on eggshells and worry about violating the latest political correctness rule. There are 100 employees, from editors to historians. PragerU. This year, the L.A. Business Journal rated PragerU one of the best places to work in all of Los Angeles. What made you want to work here? That's a good question. Um, I could talk about the pay, benefits, beautiful space that we're in, but honestly, it just came down to working for something I believe in and the meaningfulness of it. Of course, all of this happening in the heart of the traditionally liberal Los Angeles. We want to fight out of the belly of the beast, as I say, right here in California. And they aren't going anywhere. Here are the expansion plans. We're looking into the future. This is the future of PragerU. One thing you won't see in the future is videos about Donald Trump 
As a nonprofit, they don't endorse candidates. They simply talk about issues. Drives the left crazy that we never talked about Trump. Drives them crazy. That must have been a lot of work to avoid him. You may have been the only thing in all of media that avoided him. That That's whole time. right. No one did more than Jefferson to create the United States of America. Prager U says they now average 11 million unique viewers on YouTube. Why do you think that is? I think that there is an appetite for ideas that are not being heard. If your crew walked around with me at an airport and saw the number of young people who come over to me, you, you'd think that I, I was in a rock band. We do voiceovers in Podcast. here. This is part of one of Dennis's sets. That we Marissa hopes on, there's a lesson for all of us here. Challenge yourself by hearing an alternative point of view. Sit down with somebody who differs with you and have a real conversation, not ad hominem attacks. You don't need to be mean about it, but actually learn from them. Prager you, the nonprofit doesn't make political statements, but Dennis Prager, the radio host, does. When we come back, Prager opens up about how Republicans could win in this deep blue state. Stay with us. The vision of a free country doesn't comport with human nature. People, most people do not yearn to be free. They yearn to be taken care of. And that is the reason the left wins almost everywhere in the world. They promise to take care of you. For decades now, radio talk show host Dennis Prager has had some pretty controversial opinions. Before the break, we showed you his nonprofit Prager U, which is not allowed to endorse candidates. Now more of our sit down with Dennis Prager, the individual. And we talked about being a conservative in California. I'm not so terribly optimistic because there is a large body of people living in this state who vote Democrat, who vote for the left, which is the same thing as Democrat now, used to be liberal. I was a Democrat half my life. So good to do good. But when it left liberalism, I left it. The truth is I'm still a liberal. That's the irony. But every liberal is a conservative. True liberals are now called conservatives. Just one example. We believe in racial integration, and the left believes in racial segregation. Columbia University, which I attended, has an all-black dorm. There are two groups who support all black dorms, and they're not liberals and they're not conservatives. The left and the Ku Klux Klan. They're the only people who support all black dormitories. The left is the most racist, large group in the United States. They have contempt for blacks, and they believe in racial segregation. They believe race is important, the opposite of, of anti-racism throughout American history. If you were anti-racist, you said race doesn't matter. Now, if you say race doesn't matter, the left calls you a racist. So I don't understand, to go back to California, why people vote Democrat, except the ones who want to be given goodies. But, but even, even that is not enough to elect. It's the college educated, <laughs> ironically, who have been brainwashed that the danger to America comes from the right. That's a brainwash. The danger to America is entirely from the left. What would your advice be to Republicans or conservatives to be more effective at winning elections in this Oh, state? I do. I have one piece of advice. Never run against your candidate. Run against the left. They're interchangeable. It's, you're, you're, the, the, the Democrat you're running against is irrelevant. Joe Biden is irrelevant. Kamala Harris is irrelevant. They're all interchangeable. You have to run against the left and explain to the constituents whose votes you want. The left is destroying America. Look at what it's doing to schools. Look at what it's doing to cities. Look at what it's doing with regard to violence. That's what you do. By being the Democratic candidate, and we don't do this, by the way, as a, as a 501c3, we don't say what I'm saying to you. Right. I'm t speaking now as Dennis. Sure not as Prager you. Yeah. I want to make that clear. Because we don't do political videos or, or anything like that. But uh, it, it's, it's a conundrum to me that people would vote for, for people who are ruining their state, their cities. But look, the human condition is complex. 
Up next, a busy week of signing bills for Governor Newsom. Could a TV debate be in his future? Senate Bill 1020 is now a law in the state of California. Governor Gavin Newsom signs the country's most aggressive climate bills ever at an EV charging station in Mare Island. The state is investing $54 billion in climate initiatives. This wasn't his only big action this week. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you all. In San Jose, the governor making his care court proposal a reality. This will make it easier to force severely mentally ill or drug addicted homeless people into treatment. The governor also launching a state website called abortion.ca.gov, which provides resources for those seeking abortions, and it's not just aimed at California residents. It includes information on your right to an abortion and information if you're traveling to California from another state that has restricted your reproductive care. The governor using $100,000 of his reelection funds in California to buy these billboards in red states promoting California's abortion website. By the way, he hasn't used any of those funds on TV ads actually in California so far. Governor Newsom even offered to debate Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on TV before the election. We'd be happy to host that. The governor agreed to debate his opponent here in California, Republican Brian Dolly. Not clear if that's going to be on TV. We've offered to host that here on California's only statewide political show. Newsom's Republican opponent, State Senator Brian Dolly, agreed to our offer via Twitter. He says, thanks, Alex Michelson. Let's go. Let's hope the governor says, let's go. We will be hosting a pretty big debate for L.A. Mayor and L.A. County Sheriff next week. So we leave you with a look at L.A. City Hall. We'll see you next week with that and a whole lot more. I love it.